fans and still reminisce about the good old days of world championship wrestling. Josephine Cafagna looks at an era certain to strike a nostalgic chord with Australians of all backgrounds. Johnny Doyle presents World Championship Wrestling. And now here's my stateside running mate, Sammy Menick. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome again to World Championship Wrestling. And say, fans, you know, we have a tremendous card for you tonight. A really great card. Some of the best matches. The Italian fan just lunch. And one of the roughest men you'd ever wish to see on World Championship yeah, Wrestling. And... I haven't finished yet. I haven't finished yet. Well, you've interrupted me once more. Carlos, you've got all your students... Wrestling was big in Australia in the 1960s and 70s when names like Brute Bernard, Mario Milano, Killer Carl Cox and Spiros Arion brought with them a huge cult following and sell-out crowds at Festival Hall in Melbourne and Brisbane, the Sydney Stadium and the Perry Lake in Perth. Not uh, I suppose that's how they classified them. So is it fair enough to say that you changed sides then? You went, you turned into a bad. I got ugly, yeah. <laughs> I got older. <laughs> oh, it wasn't just the players who were ugly, the play was too. The world... Courage violence. I don't think so, no. I never thought so. I think people identify with it and like it, but I don't think children go out and uh, become violent because they watch wrestling, no. We found that the Australian especially the new Australians, the Italian and the Greek, loved wrestling. So we tried to give the people American wrestling. We tried to use some Australian wrestlers. We would try to bring in a Greek wrestler, usually from Greece if possible. And the Italian wrestlers that could speak Italian were always very popular. Still involved in training younger fighters and promotes the sport, or sport entertainment as the participants prefer, overseas. He believes a large ethnic following wrestling had 30 years ago was mainly due to the fact that the game was so easy to follow. Well, I think it's about the one sport that Australia plays that everybody understands. I mean, really, if you, if, uh, you come out from Italy and you go to an Australian rules match, you don't really understand the rules, but you can understand what happens in a boxing or a wrestling match. They count three or they knock them out. The spectators are playing, getting out of the way. End of the ring post again. And wrestling goes back a long way in uh, the old countries. You know, the Greeks had wrestling in Socrates' time, and there's been wrestling for years and years, hundreds of years in uh, Italian. And you know, some people that come overseas, migrate to Australia, may not speak the best English in the world, but wrestling is a type of a sport that they can understand. You don't have to have the play-by-play. -play. They understand the hands-on type of thing that it is. These days, there's not much professional wrestling going on anymore, except the occasional exhibition match at an RSL club or shopping centre. There just isn't the following to support it. Although Jim Barnett has just signed up with an Australian television network, to show one hour a week of American wrestling. And he plans to bring them out here on a tour in the next year. The Yanks have really overkilled it. Go to the submission. Trouble is again, all the old ones, they won't get out of it. Like, they're in their 50s and 60s, they still want to be involved, they still want to wrestle. Those days are gone, it's finished. It's a new era and they've got to, they've got to give way to the new ideas and, and they won't and that's what's killed it in Australia. Melbourne particularly is dead. Because I'm not being horrible, but Mario Milano is still wrestling down there. He's nearly 60, and I love Mario. He's a, he's a, he's a top bloke. But really, it's, he's too old. He's, he should be out of it. This was Ken's last match. At 34, he's getting out of wrestling because of injury. As a kid going to watch the live wrestling, he was inspired to become a baddie. I quite love being bad. You know? It's a real thrill. Like I've wrestled in front of 6,000 people. And to have 6,000 people hate your guts, it's an amazing feeling. It's, you know, it really gives you that 
sense of authority, it's great. At least he admits he's play acting the role of the enemy, but the old participants fiercely protect the image of world championship wrestling, maintaining it was all for real. Those punk Dominal stretch by Milano. A chance here for Ox Baker's in there. And so we think this is uh, cauliflower ears, broken ribs, knees, ankles. I can tell you very honestly that I didn't rig any matches. If they were rigged, I didn't know about it. Wrestling is sports entertainment. That's the way it is now. I always knew who I thought was the best wrestler, but the best wrestler didn't always win. It's a secret you're not gonna let go, are you? Thank you, Josephine. I appreciate the interview. Some people, people believe politicians' promises. Some people uh, believe that the best horse wins at Ramwick. I don't know whether they do or they don't. I wouldn't knock anything that's been Absolutely fabulous to me. Was it for real? The last World Championship wrestling match went to air in November 1978. The Broadcasting Tribunal was putting increasing regulations in force, preventing the television show producers from putting the blood and violence to air. Eventually, all interest was lost. There's always talk of a possible resurgence of wrestling in Australia, but it's just talk. Perhaps the fans of old-time wrestling prefer to just reminisce about the old days. Well, that's all there is. There isn't any more for World Championship Wrestling for this week until tomorrow night at Festival Hall.